And with that, I now recognize Mayor Bryant. Thank you, Chairman Issa, Chairman Hastings, Ranking Members uh, Cummings and DeFazio, and Congressman here. And I'd also like to recognize Congressman Gosar for his assistance in many ways as well. Um, I come before you today wearing two hats. I'm uh, both the mayor of our small town of 558 people, three years old, Arizona's newest community, and also that of a general manager of a, a rather nice 250-room hotel. And our little town is located on the southern boundary of Grand Canyon National Park. We exist for one reason. We exist because Grand Canyon National Park brings four and a half million people a year to visit it. Without the park being there, there's no reason for our community. We're a tourism industry. We're dependent upon the tourism industry. And without that park open, we basically are shut down. We have a good relationship with our park. We appreciate Governor, uh, excuse me, Superintendent Ubaraga and his team. We recognize that those workers, those rangers, are there because they choose to serve and to share this beautiful, wonderful resource. And we know that this shutdown has impacted them in many ways, as well as our community. And we recognize that relationship and want to protect that relationship. At the same time, we feel like we have sincerely been significantly been impacted by the decisions to close down the government and our national park. The month of October is a very wonderful month. It's a beautiful month to be in Grand Canyon. When we started out, it was 90 plus percent occupancy at the end of September, reservations on the books ready to come. Our River Outfitters had, I believe, seven or eight trips worth $900,000 ready to go down the Colorado River. Today, I'll tell you that at least in one hotel, we're in the low 40% and dropping. We've lost over $400,000 in one place alone. The impact to our community has been in the millions of dollars within a very short time. All this because elected members of Congress and the President can't come to grips with passing and getting a budget going. In the meantime, we in the front line feel kind of like cannon fodder. They feel like we're the ball bouncing back and forth and we're the ones that are paying the bill. Suddenly our source of business, our source of income for our little community is closed October 1st. We immediately began to ask questions with regard to how we can do it, how we can get our park back open. In 1995, same thing happened and within a reasonably short period of time, there was an agreement worked out between the National Park Service, Department of Interior, and our Governor, Fife Symington. That application, that policy could have been easily put into place. We don't understand why it wasn't. It could have been pulled out, dusted off, changed to apply today, and then applied. But we went, in, went out and asked, and we offered to put up funds. Within a very short time, our little town 558 people put up $200,000 out of our coffers as a community. Within a few more days, we had well over $200,000 committed from business community in our area and across the state. We were willing to put up and fund the expenses at no cost to the National Park Service to keep portions of the park open. We weren't asking for a full opening, we were asking for partial. We were asking that Highway 64 primary conduit through the National Park, comes up from I-40, a connection between Albuquerque and Los Angeles, heavily traveled, tour buses, RVs. Our connection, Highway 64, runs through the town of Tucson, goes into the park, and turns east to connect to a Highway 89, which then goes into m many other national parks and monuments. The first couple of days, it was left open. We thank Superintendent Ubaraga for that. But the plan that was used was, failed, was doomed to fail at the beginning. We were allowing people to traverse through the park. Everything else was closed. But the parking spaces alongside the road were barricaded. It's kind of like offering a piece of candy to somebody and say, you can't open it. You can't open it. They're going to find a way. Their frustration was there. Therefore, the buses, tour buses, RVs, and, and personal cars were parking either on the shoulders or in the road to take a look at this great, magnificent World Heritage Site. 
We understand that. And we agree with the superintendent when he closed it because it was unsafe. We feel that, and we had offered, Coconino County Sheriff's Department said they would assist and they have concurrent jurisdiction inside the park, offered to help patrol and keep it safe. Open up the parking spaces, allow people to at least view. We offered to put up uh, porta potties to help keep things reasonably clean. We were told no. We asked why. We couldn't apply the thing, in the agreement in 1995. It's against National Park Service or Department of Interior Administration's policy. We never quite got it clear. We were told that either all the parks open or none of the parks open. We have concerns about that. And we believe that when a national park is closed, that the individuals in the community, if they come forward and are offered to help and to support, ought to be able to open that. We really appreciate the work of Governor Jan Brewer and her efforts to reopen the park. And we were very ecstatic last Saturday morning in a beautiful blue sky to open up, with the superintendent's help, Grand Canyon National Park for business again. We look forward to having some changes after this, this shutdown is done and come back to you and request some options with regard to clarifying a policy that says we be able to, in a community that wants to stand up, take responsibility, be accountable when the government won't, and pay the bills. We think the policy ought to be clarified to allow that to take place. I can tell you from being on the front lines, when you have a family come in from South Africa or Australia or Brazil or China, in many cases planning for 10 years to bring their children and experience that. And you've got to tell them at 7 o'clock at night after they've driven all that way that you can't go in the National Park. You can't see it. Well, 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 why not? And with tears streaming down the children's face, we've got to tell them because our government has shut it down. We need to find different ways of doing this. And we, we would really appreciate the time afterwards to talk about a potential for the future of uh, creating a, a clarity of the policy that would allow a national park to be run, not run, but assisted in, in the expenses covered by a local community. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor.